it's G5XV. Let's give him a go. Ah, what's going on? Ah. Hi guys, it's Michael G0PAT here. Now I'm not a massive contester, but I have experienced the issue of trying to drive your radio from a laptop to send CW in a CW contest. If the PC runs any other task that has a higher priority than your contesting software, then you can get breaks uh, and problems with the sending of the CW, which mucks up your QSOs. The wing here gets over this issue by buffering the characters sent to it by the computer and managing the actual keying itself, ensuring accurately timed morphs. So when Dennis at Kanga UK told me he was going to be the distributor of the K1EL wing here, I had to try it out. Now if you're not already familiar with it, K1EL also produces a magical little keying unit called the K16, which can be programmed using a paddle. It's incredibly feature rich, and although a little daunting at first to set up, it's ridiculously configurable and a real pleasure to use. The WK USB wing gear effectively packages up the gear into an attractive case with all the essential controls to drive it, and then adds a USB interface to enable connectivity to your computer, not just for integrating with things like N1MM, but also to enable you to configure the gear via graphical user interface. Let's have a look under the bonnet and see what we're getting here. The basic building blocks of the wing here are the standalone keyer, a serial communications interface that uses USB to communicate with a computer, an array of four buttons for accessing the menus in standalone mode and sending message memories, a speed control for manually adjusting your CW speed, a 3.5mm or 8th inch stereo jack input for a paddle, and two outputs to connect to your key input on your radios. These rather oddly use RCA sockets, but I was lucky to find lots of old audio visual leads in my junk box, which worked perfectly. There are a further two switched outputs that provide press to talk switching with a configurable hang time. And finally, the unit has a basic sounder to provide a side tone, or simply to give audio enunciation when using the menus in standalone mode. This all fits in a small and professionally screen printed steel case, which is roughly 10 centimeters by 7.5 centimeters by 4.4 centimeters, or Imperial, about four by three by one and three quarter inches. That's ignoring all the sticky out bits. The whole package weighs about 240 grams or eight and a half ounces. The Kia functionality deserves a video all of its own, so in this video I'm going to concentrate on the integration of the wind Kia with a computer and applications like N1MM to make this an effective contesting tool. So let's get this set up, connected to a computer, all the software loaded and show it in action. At the time of recording there are two documents to get you started with the wind Kia USB. The WK USB 3 Quick Start Guide and the README file which describes installing USB drivers for the Wink here. Now I've connected my Wink here to a Windows 10 laptop and the process has been simply plug and play. Once you've followed the instructions and loaded any recommended drivers, attach the Wink here to your PC. You'll need a USB Type A to USB Type B lead to connect the Wink here. Type A is the familiar shape that we have on our PCs, Type B has the square cross section. To connect an application to your Wink here, you'll need to know which COM port it's connected to. Two approaches to this are, open your hardware manager, select ports, USB and LPT, and look for your device. You may have other devices connected, but hopefully you can work out what's what. In my case, it calls it a USB serial port, and I'm on COM4. Alternatively, you can download WKScan from K1EL's website. I'll put links in the comments below, and then just install it. Simply run the application and select Scan, and it will display the COM port that your Wink here is attached to. A quick and simple test that everything is installed and working correctly is to download and install the WK3 demo application. 
Select Setup and make sure you have the correct COM port selected. Now select Open. You should see a success message and that your Winkier is online. You can type in some text and you should hear it sent from the Winkier internal speaker. If you turn the speed knob on the front of the unit, this should alter the displayed speed in the application. If you press Tune, you should hear a constant tone until you press Off. Congratulations, your Winkier is working. Next, we're going to install WK3 Tools, a little application to configure our Kia and perform any firmware updates. With the Winkier connected, we start WK3 Tools and select the Set COM Port button and set the COM port as before. You can select the Test WK button to have the application query the Winkier and check all is OK and return the loaded firmware version. Here we have version 30.10. You can check the latest firmware available from the product page and the upgrade process involves emailing K1EL for a file which is then loaded using this W3K Tools utility. With the WK3 Tools utility we can now configure our wing here. When you first connect it, it will likely be configured with these default settings. Let's quickly customise this to explain some of the settings. Let's start with our call sign. Now I've added this, I can enter my first pre-formatted message and simply use slash M and the Kia will replace it with my call sign. This is useful because you can set up up to two separate call signs at a time and simply switch between operators without having to reload message memory. I can select my Kia mode and decide if I want to just switch the Kia output, switch the Kia output and sound the side tone or switch both the Kia and the PTT output along with the side tone. I can limit the upper and lower CW speed set by the speed pot, define the speed I want the wing Kia to use when enunciating menu information, and set a default Kia speed. The speed pot defaults to the Kerr words per minute, Kerr WPM, when turned fully anti-clockwise. At the nine o'clock position, it gives the minimum word per minute speed, and when turned fully clockwise, it gives the maximum word per minute speed. If I want to send my call sign both fast and slow to maximize replies, I can use the slash Z and slash Y commands to slow down and speed up in words per minute the sending speed. This will be relative to whatever speed I have set the speed control to. In message three, I'm going to use the auto incrementing serial number feature slash N to send the serial for each QSO and then increment ready for the next one. Now in case I have to send it more than once, I will also add a message for to decrement the serial, resend it, and then increment it again. To load personalized configuration, simply press the right WK button. The next time I want to modify something, I can simply connect to the wing here and press read WK to read the current configuration, modify it, and then write the new configuration to the unit by pressing right WK. You can also save a configuration file to your computer by selecting Write Config File or open a previously saved configuration file from your computer by selecting Read Config File and then write it to the wing here. Finally, let's install N1MM and set it up to work with a wing here and a radio ready for contesting. Go to n1mm.hamdocs.com Select files and download both at the N1 MM Plus full install and the N1 MM Plus latest updates. Run the full installer first. This will create desktop shortcuts and add N1 MM to your start menu. Don't run the application yet, however. Next, run the update installer. Once this is done, go ahead and start M1 MM. You'll be prompted with database creation options. If this is your first install, simply select Create new N1MM Logger Plus database. You may get a pop up once or twice advising you to enter call sign and station info. We'll do that in just a moment. Next, you'll be prompted to name your N1MM database. I've just used my call sign as a database name and selected save. Now we get to enter our call sign and station information. Press OK when you're done. Now let's set up N1MM to work with the wing here as if we're taking part in a contest. I've connected my wing here to the PC using a USB lead and connected the key one output from the wing here to the key input on my radio. I've also connected the cat interface of my radio to the PC so that it automatically logs the frequency and I can use the band map in N1MM to immediately jump to a frequency. Finally, I've plugged in a paddle to the wing here so that I can send by hand if needed. 
Before configuring the ports and controls in M1 MM, I need to check what port my Winkio and transceiver are using. As before, I can either use Device Manager or I can run K1EL's WK Scan tool. The WK Scan tool is a little bit more helpful here as it at least identifies which port the Winkio is on. My Winkio is on COM4 and my radio is on COM5. I can go ahead and select config from the menu and choose configure port mode control audio other from the N1MM menu and start on the hardware tab. Here I set up COM4 as my wink ear, simply ticking it as an option. Next I select COM5 which I've connected to my KX3 and I select this under the radio drop down. Doing this is going to allow frequency and band changes made in N1MM to be actioned on the radio and vice versa. I simply set up the configuration to match my radio. There are even suggested settings at the bottom of this pop-up window to get you started. Now we select the Winky tab and you can choose iambic keying mode, side tone frequency, whether to hear the side tone from the wink ear, I actually turn this on while getting things working, and whether to use the speed pot on the wink ear. A feature that I really love. After entering all my details and configurations I found that it was necessary to restart M1MM for them all to take effect. So we've been having a go at a CW contest using the wink here and having a great experience. So now instead of N1MM sending the CW and controlling the radio directly via a simple interface it's sending a stream of data down to the wink here, which buffers that information and then controls the sending of the CW. So you don't get those interruptions and poorly, uh, poorly created characters due to delays when the laptop gets busy doing things. I love the speed pot on the front. Um, I know N1MM, you can control the speed through the, in, through the um, GUI of the application, but it's a little bit of a, a fiddle to do it and it's much quicker just you turning the, the speed knob. The speed is reflected in N1MM, so as I turn the knob I can see the speed that I've set um, because of the feedback, so that's a really nice experience. Now, if you just want a basic Kia for sending, then the K16 is, is an amazing little device. Uh, you can buy it as a simple PCB and box it up yourself. The Wing Kia delivers all that in a nicely created case, You've got your control buttons, you've got the speed knob, and you've got the ability to plug it into a laptop and use an application, a GUI, to do the configuration, and that is a real, real bonus. I think its real strength, though, comes for contesters, for people who want to be able to churn through a lot of contacts but without having any of those delays or problems in the sending. Um, it takes that pressure off of the PC, you can use older equipment and you don't have to worry about software updates and other processes going on that may impact the sending. It's been a fantastic experience. My, my congratulations to K1EL and Steve on making such an amazing little device. Uh, if you're looking for one of these in the US, US then get in touch with K1EL. Here in the UK or Europe, uh, you can go to Kanga UK. My thanks to Dennis from Kanga UK for the loan of the unit for this review. And uh, whether you're contesting or simply rag chilling, get out there and enjoy your radio.